The famine was severe in the land. It happened when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought out of Egypt. Their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little more food. Judah spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you treat me so badly, telling the man that you had another brother? They said, The man asked directly concerning ourselves and concerning our relatives, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? We just answered his questions. Is there any way we could know that he would say, Bring your brother down? Judah said to Israel his father, Send the boy with me, and we will arise and go, so that we may live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I will be collateral for him. From my hand will you require him, if I don't bring him to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. For unless we had lingered, surely we would have returned a second time by now. Their father Israel said to them, If it be so now, do this. Take from the choice fruits of the land in your bags, and carry down a present for the man, a little balm, a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds, and take double money in your hand, with the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks, carry again in your hand. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take also your brother and arise, go again to the man. May God Almighty give you mercy before the man, that he may release to you your other brother and Benjamin. If I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. The men took that present, and they took double money in their hand, and Benjamin, and rose up, went down to Egypt, and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house, and butcher an animal, and make ready, for the men will dine with me at noon. The man did as Joseph commanded. And the man brought the men to Joseph's house. The men were afraid, because they were brought to Joseph's house, and they said, Because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time are we brought in, that he may seek occasion against us and fall on us, and take us for bondservants along with our donkeys. They came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they spoke to him at the door of the house, and said, O oh, my Lord, we indeed came down at the first to buy food, and it happened, when we came to the lodging place that we opened our sack, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of the sack, our money in full weight. We have brought it again in our hand. We have brought down other money in our hand to buy food. We don't know who put our money in our sacks. He said, Peace be to you. Don't be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given your treasure in your sacks. I received your money. He brought Simeon out to them. The man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water, and they washed their feet. He gave their donkeys fodder. They made ready the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house, and bowed down themselves to him to the earth. He asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he yet alive? They said, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. They bowed the head and did homage. He lifted up his eyes and saw Benjamin, his brother, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? He said, God be gracious to you, my son. Joseph made haste, for his heart yearned over his brother, and he sought a place to weep, and he entered into his room and wept there. He washed his face and came out. He controlled himself and said, Serve the meal. They served him by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians that ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians don't eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. They sat before him the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth, and the men marveled one with another. He sent portions to them from before him, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. They drank and were merry with him.
As he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, see what kind of stones and what kind of buildings? Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone on another, which will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? What is the sign that these things are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus answering began to tell them, Be careful that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, don't be troubled. For those must happen, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines and troubles. These things are the beginning of birth pains. But watch yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils. You will be beaten in synagogues. You will stand before rulers and kings for my sake for a testimony to them. The gospel must first be preached to all the nations. When they lead you away and deliver you up, don't be anxious beforehand or premeditate what you will say, but say whatever will be given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will deliver up brother to death and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. You will be hated by all men for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end, the same will be saved. But when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let him who is on the housetop not go down nor enter in to take anything out of his house. Let him who is in the field not return back to take his cloak. But woe to those who are with child and to those who nurse babies in those days. Pray that your flight won't be in the winter, for in those days there will be oppression, such as there has not been the like from the beginning of the creation which God created until now, and never will be. Unless the Lord had shortened the days, no flesh would have been saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he chose, he shortened the days. Then if anyone tells you, Look, here is the Christ, or look there, don't believe it. For there will arise false Christ and false prophets, and will show signs and wonders that they may lead astray, if possible, even the chosen ones. But you watch. Behold, I have told you all things beforehand. But in those days, after that oppression, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers that are in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out his angels, and will gather together his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the sky. Now from the fig tree learn this parable. When the branch has now become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. Even so you also, when you see these things coming to pass, know that it is near, at the doors. Most assuredly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or that hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Watch, keep alert and pray, for you don't know when the time is. It is like a man traveling to another country, having left his house and given authority to his servants and to each one his work, and also commanded the doorkeeper to keep watch. Watch, therefore, for you don't know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether at evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he might find you sleeping. What I tell you, I tell all. Watch. Chapter 9 Then Job answered, Truly I know that it is so, but how can man be just with God? If he is pleased to contend with him, he can't answer him one time in a thousand. God, who is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him and prospered, who removes the mountains and they don't know it when he overturns them in his anger, who shakes the earth out of its place, the pillars of it tremble, who commands the sun and it doesn't rise, and seals up the stars, 
who alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea, who makes the bear Orion and the Pleiades and the chambers of the south, who does great things past finding out, yes, marvelous things without number. Behold, he goes by me, and I don't see him. He passes on also, but I don't perceive him. Behold, he snatches away. Who can hinder him? Who will ask him, What are you doing? God will not withdraw his anger. The helpers of Rahab stoop under him. How much less shall I answer him, or choose my words to argue with him? Whom, though I were righteous, yet would I not answer. I would make supplication to my judge. If I had called, and he had answered me, yet I would not believe that he listened to my voice. For he breaks me with a tempest, and multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not allow me to take breath, but fills me with bitterness. If it is a matter of strength, behold, he is mighty. If of justice, who says he will summon me? Though I am righteous, my own mouth shall condemn me. Though I am blameless, it shall prove me perverse. I am blameless, I don't regard myself, I despise my life. It is all the same, therefore I say, he destroys the blameless and the wicked. If the scourge kills suddenly, he will mock at the trial of the innocent. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, he covers the faces of the judges of it. If not he, then who is it? Now my days are swifter than a runner. They flee away, they see no good. They have passed away as the swift ships, as the eagle that swoops on the prey. If I say, I will forget my complaint, I will put off my sad face and cheer up. I am afraid of all my sorrows. I know that you will not hold me innocent. I shall be condemned. Why then do I labor in vain? If I wash myself with snow and cleanse my hands with lye, yet you will plunge me in the ditch. My own clothes shall abhor me. For he is not a man as I am, that I should answer him, that we should come together in judgment. There is no umpire between us that might lay his hand on us both. Let him take his rod away from me. Let his terror not make me afraid. Then I would speak and not fear him, for I am not so in myself. Let every soul be in subjection to the higher authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those who exist are ordained by God. Therefore he who resists the authority withstands the ordinance of God, and those who withstand will receive to themselves judgment. For rulers are not a terror to the good work, but to the evil. Do you desire to have no fear of the authority? Do that which is good, and you will have praise from the same, for he is a servant of God to you for good. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid, for he doesn't bear the sword in vain, for he is a minister of God, an avenger for wrath to him who does evil. Therefore you need to be in subjection, not only because of the wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For this reason you also pay taxes, for they are ministers of God's service, attending continually on this very thing. Give therefore to everyone what you owe, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, respect to whom respect, honor to whom honor. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandments there are, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love doesn't harm a neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Do this, knowing the time, that it is already time for you to awaken out of sleep, for salvation is now nearer to us than when we first believed. The night is far gone, and the day is near. Let's therefore throw off the works of darkness, and let's put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and lustful acts, and not in strife and jealousy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh for its lust.' 